promise, or you cannot bear, not tell us with certainty that it will not impact the health of our children, our family, and our community. So now whether I'm doing this the correct way or whether I should have done it in the other portion, I do not know. But I think each one of you need to look inside yourselves and you need to really think about if this was in your backyard, no matter what the research says, and it was affecting your family, and that I think that is a consideration no matter what you tell me legally or what you tell me water-wise, what you tell me whether the paperwork is filled out on time, whatever your piece is. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if I wasn't more clear. So this part is the formal portion of the meeting. It's your opportunity to give your comments orally. It's the equivalent of submitting something in writing. And all of the written comments that have been submitted so far, those that are received tonight, we've already got a handful, and any oral comment is going to be responded to in writing. That's going to be that written response to comment document. And that's what this portion of the meeting is. And just state your name for the record. Margaret Chavis, I was here earlier. I have one more one <coughs> question. It's been brought to my attention that this testing will be done. It's only required one time a year. And um, if that is so, who, I, I, you've told me that a third party will do the testing. Who collects the samples that are sent in? Will he collect them and send in? Can he just pick where he wants to get the sample from? Or will an agency come and do this sampling? Uh, it's very interesting to me that it only has to be done one time a year when it could affect the 12 months in the year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to show you, is it west or east? I had my question earlier. Hopefully it's answered. Your question earlier won't be official part of the record, so if you want to okay. state it again for us. From an agriculturally standpoint, a blood waste, oldest waste from Gonzales County Precinct 4. Uh, from my agricultural statement, will the property be watched for 25 years and make sure that a 24 inch, a 24 hour rainfall will not produce flood waters to go into them? Thank you. Cal Tear, <coughs> followed by Laura Cook. Hello, I'm Cal Taylor, and I'm surrounded on my, on three sides around my place. Uh, this property is on the west side of me, it's on the south side of me, and it's on the east side of me. And I'm concerned for mainly about the, the, the drainage and the uh, odor. Because I've got 14 great grandkids, and they spend a lot of time there with me. I live there alone, me and my boy, and, and I'm concerned about the odor and the runoff of this, you know. And uh, they they run all over my place, and uh, what the what the what the you know just concerned about it for the diseases that we're going to be getting. And uh, I know of one boy that was poisoned when he was a baby, a neighbor of mine there, from this runoff, bad sewage, and just almost lost his life. If he hadn't got there at the time that he did, he would have. But uh, just just very concerned about the, the runoff and the, and the odor of it. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I would, I'm asking each one of you gentlemen, when this is over, to call your wife and see what her reaction is to this. Um, I, I just think there's some perspectives that are not being shown up here. Um, I would also, uh, I don't know if it's legal or not, but I would like, you, like to invite you to the ranch for one day from sunup to sundown. And my father-in-law usually starts his day about four, which is a little early. But would you come and see what we have and what we have to do to make this land productive and make beef that you are not afraid to eat from HEB? That beef comes from a pasture. It doesn't just come from the grocery store. Unfortunately, a lot of children, that's what they think. But I invite you, I invite you and your wife, and I will take you for a day, and let's go ahead and do it by horseback, because that's the best way to travel. But please, please come. Come see my neighborhood. Thank you. Story followed by Dr. Jim's story. I've got a few documents which I'd like to. Can I uh, have documents? Uh, of course. Okay. Um, so during the comment period, we discussed that integrity matters. I think it matters especially that we all have good data, right? So we can make sure our communities are safe and things are done as they say. For example, if soil is uh, picked up and tested, um, it's important, um, especially if you're a neighbor. So some things kind of caught my uh, attention during this process. We've had months. We've had discussions. We've had discussions on the phone. Um, you guys were out uh, visiting the site today. I noticed on the uh, out front it said, Suspected abandoned water well. Well, that's not the case. It has a submersible pump on it. We sub to the city and we drink it and we use it to feed our wildlife and our livestock. So the TCQ was aware of that. Mr. Swenson is aware of that. And I called calls credibility into play. Okay, that's important. He said earlier, integrity is important. Next, um, the land's already been leased. There's surface access to the land to major multi-billion dollar corporations. Thousands of people have access to this. Wells are being drilled in the neighborhood. Wells are being drilled across the street. In fact, surveyors were on that property as early as within the past 30 days. I've been told that multiple wells are being drilled on it. That means that pits will be dug. Spores not killed by lime will be present and reproduce in greater numbers than they were originally found in. That will hit. Touch the bit, it will penetrate all the sands, more than Carrizo, including uh, Gangon, <coughs> Cook Mountain, Sparta, and other aquifers. It will be transmitted to workers in the field. We all in the TCEQ want, are concerned about our precious water source resource. There are recycling efforts going on with regard to fracking. That water will be taken and transmitted across the country. Illegal aliens are coming across. Things such as leprosy and tuberculosis. On and on and on that we thought were, um, were gone are now coming back in. So we have the perfect storm. We have uh, vectors that are being brought in and dumped from port potties from the immigrant workers. We have workers going to be present on top of and penetrating through the ground, transporting both material, cuttings, and water around our great state of Texas. So all of a sudden, we have the opportunity here to spread very virulent things that have caused massive death across the globe, over 4.2 million deaths globally, annually, related to uh, diarrhea uh, and pathogens and viruses. So, I won't go through these, but I'll, I've got 20 documents which I'd like to be uh, in the record. First is the Journal uh, of American Water Resource Association. And basically, it discusses that the EPA, when they were establishing the limits uh, of metals in the ground, 
actually their samples um, were very low in concentration as compared to the normal samples. And they found that it didn't uh, occur, uh, they, 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 the, the theory was that 100 applications would be able to be applied to the ground before a significant concentration reached maximum levels of chromium, lead, and other heavy metals. In fact, what they found is that in as little as one application, some of those limits could be exceeded. And so today I asked earlier, who's going to do the testing? I didn't get an adequate answer. I asked how the tests could be done and how frequently it's going to be done. And now I'm understanding that I think once a year. Well, uh, we'll be far beyond potentially <coughs> maximum contaminant limits as, as, as issued by the EPA. And we also today found out we don't have any model for it. And so with all this great amount of research that we've done and professionals, uh, we still don't have answers. And it, it brings me great concern with regard to the, the quality of this facility that will, that, that, that in fact, there is no facility, that there is no containment. In fact, um, uh, uh, Mr. Swinton's own representative clearly admitted that it is likely and probable that uh, septage, when entered during rain event, will fall off the property by his own words and his own admission. Um, second is a uh, center for sludge information. Um, here, um, uh, it, it discusses uh, synthetic pharmaceuticals, uh, synthetic hormones uh, that are not tested uh, by, by in, in, the, in the soil. There's obviously present. Uh, the state of Florida, we offer that up uh, for revision and the reason behind that. Um, uh, Texas Railroad Commission Oil Land uh, Gas Docket Number 01-0274323. This uh, here, uh, they have uh, uh, permanently amended minimum spacing uh, to 40 acres uh, per well in the Eagle for Shale. So that could mean up to 10 wells on, on, the, on the property could be drilled. Each pad could consist of seven or more acres. That's over 70 acres of impermeable land that we could down, not including the roads. Each one of those wells, based upon the experience, could have 1,500 or more visitors to it. 10 wells, 1,500, it's 100, what is that, 15,000? 15,000 visitors. This is supposed to be on non-public lands. Uh, the other thing is that, and we discussed this in the comment period, is that there is a, um, what I believe is to be inaccurate, and I, and I mentioned this during the, the, the comment period to the TCQ, uh, and nothing was done about it, but it looked like to me. Uh, property number 16653 and property number 16558 are under his control and only separated by a road, and yet they're not uh, shown on the uh, on the maps that we that in the application, nor in this uh, this room. Uh, in addition to that, some uh, neighbors adjoining that were not uh, contacted. Uh, Mark Cluck, for example, was not contacted formally. Uh, he's a very substantial landowner and uh, has 5,000 cattle. There's a chicken farm uh, or chicken plant right up the road. Uh, we uh, we're going to uh, document here um, uh, that uh, that there's scientific evidence that the gram positive spore uh, uh, pathogens, especially spores. Are not affected by lime. They go inactive when they're uh, when moisture hits them again. They can actually start to grow. We can document that um, uh, we have articles here that uh, discuss uh, that, that human to animal and animal to human transmission. So now uh, pigs, for example, or eagles that are present in the area, or turkeys or deer that may eat and uh, uh, and we may eat uh, can transmit disease to humans. Um, Google Earth is Exhibit Six. Uh, this shows an um, uh, example of some of the eagle fruit operations right now. Uh, the Canadian Journal of Infectious Diseases, uh, that's uh, number seven. It, it, can I just submit these or do yes. you need to go through them? No, you don't have to go through them. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it just for the benefit of the sure. audience because there's some pretty good information here. Uh, the Canadian, uh, let me just read, this is quick. This is uh, from the Canadian Journal of Infectious Diseases. The land application of, of sewage slides has not been adequately uh, evaluated. Pathogen regrow higher than initial levels. Conclusion. It is unreasonable to expect rural residents to tolerate exposure to disease, land, air, and water. One other thing, um, in our area, we have the water table is up 15 feet, and we have wells as shallow as 80 feet. Um, so it's not the Carrizo, it's 2,000 feet that's, that's really that much of a concern. It's probably the shallow ones where we get our windmill water from and there's even some springs out there. Um, University uh, tuberculosis, tuberculi bacilli resistant to different kill. They remain viable and persistent for, uh, and a substantial points of human life. They can live on grasses more than 70 days. 
tuberculosis be transmitted from animals to humans. It's interesting that the United States government is funding through foreign aid and millions of dollars to rebuild mosques and, and, uh, and uh, sewage sites in four countries. And I would propose that they spend some of the money here, maybe to the city of Nixon, so they can upgrade the facilities to handle such material. Um, I would say that when you look at uh, the, 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 the things that are coming from workers that are not properly inoculated, when you look at the waste is not treated in any form of manner that's going to get rid of gram-positive uh, bacteria or spores, and you look at uh, the amount that's going to be going to collecting 23 million gallons, it's ridiculous, and potentially 10 cents a gallon, that's number number is $2.3 million. I would say that that kind of money would probably go better to the community to build a proper facility uh, versus just dumping on the ground. Um, so I've got 20 um, documents. Um, that uh, I'm going to trust it, that you'll be able to get them in the record, and I'll check up on you. And, uh, <laughs> Dr. Jim Story, I'm oh, sorry, can we finish? Fine. Dr. Jim Story, followed by Mary and Minnie.
by Mr. Rajbar, Mr. Swinson's advocate. And I'm reminded of Alice's fanciful trip through Wonderland. I might parenthetically add that literary scholars feel that Lewis Carroll's story represents humankind's continuous concern over limited life and death. Is it, uh, isn't it ironic that we are touching on the issues of life and death today? The comments and presentations by the applicant's rep representative are fanciful and unsupported by scientific fact. Be assured, ladies and gentlemen, that domestic septic is rife with virulent microorganisms remnants of illegal drugs, heavy metals, radioactive substances, pharmaceuticals, and other toxic materials. We have submitted to the TECQ a number of scientific papers and articles which support my comments. I shall be grateful if the TCEQ will give them consideration in the formulation of a directive in the septage application by Mr. Swenson. As a brief summary, lime and alkalinity fails to kill many microorganisms. Notably, it has no appreciable effect on spores are the TB bacillus. These are, are, are organisms can survive in soil for weeks, months, and years. B, ultraviolet light, sunlight, can kill tuberculous organisms in a test tube. But unfortunately, cannot reach the organisms covered by soil or, or vegetation, no organisms contained in solid waste. Organisms do migrate through the soil, especially with moisture induced by rain or irrigation. And they reach our streams, creeks, rivers, and shallow water wells. It is notable that even processed septic, i.e., that is, sludge, also contains virulent organisms. Talk is made of monitoring the septage application process. It is notable that the state of Florida, which has been mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, has banned the application of domestic septage for agricultural purposes. The monitoring system is simply inadequate, not enforceable. I turn now to another significant threat to health imposed by domestic sectors. It is notable that some 10,000 illegal immigrants enter our country daily, while legal immigrants are screened for disease. These poor folks, these poor illegals, are not screened, and they indeed harbor many diseases which are carried across our borders to this country. And disease arguments, or, 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 organisms 
are in the excrement, which is deposited on our domestic septic. They are bringing diseases to this country which have been eradicated long ago. Now we are seeing leprosy, tuberculosis, cystocercosis or tapeworm, sleeping sickness, polio, malaria, hepatitis, increases in HIV disease, and other diseases. These diseases are being transmitted to our citizens. This is well documented. These organisms can be transmitted through urine, feces, sputum, and other body secretions. Folks, be assured that there are many reported cases of disease and death related to domestic septic distribution. To be sure, it follows that, that there are lawsuits in progress relative to the gross malfeasance in the unconscionable application of the domestic septage for agricultural purposes or other purposes. The implications are self-evident. Mr. Swinson, through Mr. Rochbar, you are seeking legal sanction to toss a diseased tombon, tombon into Nixon and surrounding communities. <coughs> Indeed, a bomb into the living room of every inhabitant in the area. Finally, critique should be accompanied by proposals for solution to a problem. First, private enterprise should develop legitimate septage processing systems. The state and our federal government can consider startup grants to support such endeavors. Loans to be repaid. Certainly grants for this purpose is in preference to millions of dollars of aid to foreign countries. As one example, to rebuild building and repair a mosque, and isn't it ironic to build and repair their septic sewer systems? Secondly, our government is having great difficulty responding to the illegal immigration issue. Therefore, it would appear that we citizens must devise methods to effectively cope with disease entering our country. One small step is the prevention of disease spread through domestic septic application to the land. Thank you.
the people's best interest out front. I just, I can't, can't believe it. And if surge is so good, why do we have those septic tanks and that sort of thing? Uh, the disease thing, I think, is a very good, um, that's enough right there to scare you off. But, uh, and just 150 foot from a water well, and the water table is so shallow there. I, I don't understand that. Uh, but I wish the commission would research all the data that has been presented and reconsider the people, not just one person, but the whole area. And 900 and something acres, I can't imagine that next door. I just cannot imagine. And we're cultivators of the land. We never hardly sell. Well, they've never sold. We will have to sell something for state taxes, but uh, it's it's just does not seem possible that something like this could happen. Thank you. We did not get notice. We did get our tax notice, though. <laughs> Jane Look, followed by Colonel William Look, followed by M. Diane Savage. Good evening. My name is Jane Look. Uh, I happen to be uh, the daughter of Dr. Story, the sister of J.D. Story. Uh, I'll keep this very brief. Absolutely. Unacceptable. It is unfathomable to me the proximity, just to mention uh, the, the school alone, the school children, uh, from the time that our family has become involved in Vincent, Texas, to see the success and uh, the rate of growth and all the, the amazing economic um, possibilities, to see something like this. Not to mention, uh, it, it just it's just, un again, unfathomable. The, the health, uh, the detriment that uh, could pose health issues, uh, economic growth, it's just, again, unfathomable. And I can say that I'm a parent of four. I spend most every other weekend down in Nixon. I swim in the lake. I drink the water. This is a grave concern, and I would urge each and every one of you to consider that very aspect. Thank you very much. Followed by M. Diane Savage, followed by Joanne Story. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to this group. I keep very short as well. I strongly represent, I strongly rep uh, recommend that you send the words of Dr. Jim Story to the governor, the Senate, and the representatives of Texas. I think they need to know the truth about what's going on here, and they need to know what kind of things that we ought to be doing, not and some of the things that we're not doing properly. J.D. Story has presented great evidence of Maybe not as good as studies as we might have done in this organization. Maybe we ought to listen to commissioners, the judges, the mayor, and have a re real rethought of how we operate Texas. I spent some time in the governor's office, and I know he would be very, very interested in the comments that have been made here today. Thank you. My comments for you guys. Good evening, I'm Diane Savage. I chair the Wilson County Water Action Project. I serve as an elected representative from Wilson County on the board of directors of the Evergreen Underground Water Conservation District. And I represent Groundwater Management Area 13, 
on the South Central Texas Regional Water Planning Group, or Region L, as we fondly call it around here. So I, that's a clue where I'm coming from. And I absolutely, completely agree with the Wilson County Commissioner's Court Resolution to the TCEQ to deny application number 710926 the idea of dumping human waste on the ground within Wilson County boundaries within close proximity to residents presents a danger not only to the public health but also a possible threat to the water supply. This is just not acceptable. What are you thinking? Do any of you all remember TCEQ people? I don't know if any of you all were involved. That just two or three years ago, there was a proposal to allow higher bacteria levels in the Cibolo Creek so they could dump more pookie water in the Cibolo and flush it on down to us. Uh, the people in Wilson County went crazy and said, no, thank you. We are not interested in that. They protested loudly and longly. A number of us went to Austin and met with the head people, and the San Antonio River Authority worked long and hard. The Cibolo Creek maintained its recreational designation, and there, there's all sorts of development along it today in, with the Jackson Nature Park and various things. So it occurred to me that the people in Wilson County and the people in Gonzales County are not at all interested in any project that threatens our health, our water, or our environment. Thank you very much for asking, but we are not interested. Surely, as a state agency tasked with protecting the environmental quality of the state of Texas, you all can do better than this. Act like it. Deny application 710-926 is just smelly. Thank you. sewage 
but that is not accurate as there are many pharmaceuticals in sewage and some uh, radioactive elements as well. And uh, one last thing, furthermore, if it is so good for everything, then why is there a need for septic tanks and sewage treatment facilities? And I want to urge you to please deny this application. And if it were on your property or next to your home, you know, you wouldn't think it was going to be a great thing. Thank you. Thank you.